Hey guys, it's Tim, and this is HN Annotated. Since its first trailer dropped, fans of the classic G1 Transformers retreated to a much more accurate design to that era of the franchise in the upcoming Bumblebee prequel film. This no doubt made these fans excited to see more iconic Transformers done in this style in another live-action film. Now, while not many outside of Bumblebee and the three main Decepticon villains of the film will play major roles in the story, it looks like fans may get their wish. At San Diego Comic-Con, Bumblebee director Travis Knight confirmed that, although the main crux of the story will take place on Earth, Cybertron will make an appearance in the film. And this will be more than just an establishing shot from orbit or the like, we'll actually go down to the planet's surface and see the Transformers as they were before they went to Earth. This includes seeing the Cybertronian vehicle forms of the ones we see. This does, however, contradict what we've seen from previous films in the franchise, where the Transformers all had this similar gray protoform that only changed and were colored when they took on the different vehicle forms on Earth. This was likely changed for two reasons. First, so that they could tell the pots apart on Cybertron, which may make this the first Transformers film to have that feeling, and also to fall in line with the clear G1 aesthetic that Bumblebee is clearly going for. However, it does still appear to be a prequel film since Sector 7 plays a huge role in it and they were only introduced in the films. Maybe this means that Transformers are going for a more X-Men style film timeline. But either way, the visit to Cybertron will give us some cameos from well-known Transformers in their original Cybertronian forms. According to discussing films, while there may be more who will be able to pick out, three notable faces they were able to pick out are Cliffjumper, Shockwave, and Soundwave. For those unfamiliar with these three, let's go into them briefly. Let's start off with the one Autobot of this group, Cliffjumper. On the surface, Cliffjumper looks like a red-colored Bumblebee, which he is. But beneath that, the two are quite different. While Bumblebee was more of the happy-go-lucky kid of the group in the original show, Cliffjumper was always looking for action. He was always the first to jump into any situation, no matter how dangerous. In fact, one of his mottos is, strike first, strike fast, strike hard. While he may only act this way because of his relatively small size, remember he is the exact same build as OG Bumblebee, this apparently brave attitude has gained him respect from his fellow Autobots, even if his impulsiveness has a tendency of getting him into trouble. Cliffjumper's alternate mode is a standard-sized car of varying models, and his primary weapon is called the Glass Gas Gun, which fires a stream of gas which can turn metal as brittle as glass for a brief period. Although he appeared in some tie-in material to the film franchise, this will be the first time we see Cliffjumper in pseudo-live action, no matter how brief it is. First on the Decepticon side, here we have Soundwave. In the original cartoon, Soundwave is Megatron's right-hand bot. Acting in the role of reconnaissance a lot of the time, due to both his ability to shrink in size when he transforms, and his various scouts that can transform from the cassette tapes located in his chest. These scouts include Ravage, a Black Panther, Laserbeak and Buzzsaw, both Condors, Ratbat, a Bat, Rumble and Frenzy, who just have alternate robot modes, Slugfest, a Segasaurus, and Overkill, which becomes a Tyrannosaurus Rex. As alluded to earlier, Soundwave's original alternate form was a tape player, which he would somehow be able to shrink down into, which was confusing, but did help with stealth. His main weapons are a shoulder-mounted laser cannon and a handheld concussive blaster. Soundwave's most notable trait is his computerized voice. He actually has appeared in the film franchise before, appearing as a satellite this time around, without his voice altered, intercepting information from around the world. In Dark of the Moon, it was revealed that he had been in orbit since the 1970s. This means that unless the scenes on Cybertron are all flashbacks, then him being there during the events of Bumblebee would be another continuity flub. Though likely it is further in the past than 1987 that those scenes are taking place. Considering that he's apparently easy to pick out, this could mean that his Cybertronian look is more similar to his take depth transformation, or at the very least resembles his original design more. And finally, there's Shockwave, who's his own can of worms. Most depictions of the character describe him as being the second most powerful Decepticon next to Megatron, who's cold and logical, like an evil Mr. Spock, who was an inspiration for the character in the original Marvel Comics run. He's the Decepticon's military operations commander, who had the ability to transform into a 35-foot-long Cybertronian energy cannon, and never took an Earth form. 
Originally, he planned to overthrow Megatron, not out of a bid for power like Starscream, but because he found it logical to do so. I mention this colder, deadlier version of the character from the comics in contrast to how he was portrayed in the animated series, where he may in fact be the most pathetic Decepticon of all. There he's fanatically loyal to Megatron, to the point that he apparently tried to contact him every day for over two million years when he was dormant on Earth without response, and decided to never move on until he got one back. He also never got to leave Cybertron throughout the course of the series, and one of the major episodes featuring him was about him screwing up the one job he actually had. Needless to say, I love Cartoon Shockwave. However, the more deadly version of the character did appear in the third Transformers live-action film. Optimus Prime will also appear in essentially a speaking cameo, again voiced by Peter Cullen, but won't factor hugely into the plot of Bumblebee. But what do you guys think? Are you excited to see these guys on Cybertron? And who else do you think you'll be able to pick out from those scenes? Well, as always, let us know down in the comments. And until next time, this has been Tim for HN Annotated.